I can explain what Microsoft Fabric is with one word. Let's get started. Okay, so I've been doing quite some research to be able to explain to you and to myself what actually Microsoft Fabric is. So we're going to talk about the benefits, we're going to talk about things that you need to watch out for, and what it means for you as a Power BI developer. What do you need to know about Microsoft Fabric? Let me show you this first and then I'll tell you what Microsoft Fabric is. How does Microsoft Fabric then aim to make data accessibility and working with data easier? Sure. So as you alluded to earlier, it's really about removing that pain and drudgery from accessing your organizational data. Did you hear that? That is exactly what Microsoft Fabric is. It's all about convenience. It's about making you work and access and create data as easy as possible. And if you look at what they've done, you can actually see that that is the actual intention. Let me show you what the platform looks like. So with Microsoft Fabric, that path from raw, fragmented data to meaningful insights is significantly reduced. Again, so it's reinforcing it. It is all about making you be able to work with data as easy and convenient as fast as possible. How they've done that? It gives you a single integrated service that provides data integration capabilities, data engineering for shaping your data, data warehousing, you can build data science models, real-time analytics, and business intelligence. And the data from these different experiences is brought together by one unified data lake for your organization called One Lake. Right, so let's stop here. This is where the confusion, I think, comes from. Oh, it's just a rebranding of Synapse because everything you can see there is just Synapse, 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 Synapse. And yes, they have bundled Synapse products and one lake together with Power BI in what they call Fabric. So it is, re it is a rebranding, it is a bundling of existing products, but it's not only that. So what they've actually done is they've done work on each of those boxes to make it as easy and as frictionless for you to work with data. I'm going to show you an example now of the work they've done around these products to make it as easy and accessible and as possible, as convenient as possible, so you can start working as fast as possible. Let me show you. For example, if we take a look at the Microsoft Fabric homepage, which you can get to at fabric.microsoft.com, we're able to choose our service entry point. I'll choose a data warehouse, and from there, I'm presented with easy to access core capabilities central to my job. For example, I can easily create a new data warehouse right from here. I just need to give it a name and then hit Create. And I'm instantly navigated to the warehouse experience where I can start my project. Right? I mean, I've never created a data warehouse, but I have created data leaks. And Oh my god, I actually have a video in case you want to see and compare what I created a data lake for uh, data flow. So, you know, in Power BI, you can have data lakes, your own data lake that, you know, send the data from the data flow there. Horrible experience. It took me hours to figure out. I had to click everything and everywhere. I made the video as fast as I could and it's still like a good 20 minutes. Horrible experience. Have you seen these? Like click, 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 and then they take you to the different tools without you even realizing it. So they've changed everything, the user interface, to make it convenient for you to start this type of project. It's all about convenience. It's all about you getting you to work faster. That's what it is. So I was thinking, how do you how did they do that? How do you go from hours and hours of clicking and reading to just click, click, click? Let me show you. She is going to create now a notebook and she goes a little bit into the details of how it works. I'm going to start by navigating to the Fabric Data Engineering Experience. And since I want to start a new project, I can simply go to the left nav and create a new workspace. Now I'll just give it a name, marketing workspace, and hit apply. It's about as easy as creating a folder on my desktop. And when I create a new Fabric item, such as a new notebook, I'm automatically enrolled in a free trial. Once the trial has been successfully kicked off, you'll see that I automatically land inside the notebook ready to write some code. I did not get asked about Spark cluster configurations, network settings, or any other setup. You hear that? 
Okay, but I, I want to want to know more. It's like, what, what does it mean, really? She goes a little bit more into detail. Now, let me show you. Now, what's happening behind the scenes to make this happen is that Fabric pre-provisions live pools of Spark Compute. They're ready to go without any setup necessary, and you can get started in seconds. You can get started in seconds, and they will provision everything for you using a free trial. I have a ton of questions about that. Like, what happens after the free trial? How much is that going to cost? We'll talk about pricing also, but... Right? So, all the decisions that we had to make before to create a data lake through a warehouse, they've just created a template and they are doing that in the background for you so you can get started. I'm guessing that you can then go back and, you know, fiddle with that settings if you want to, but otherwise it's just click, 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 and you can get started working. Convenience. Right, so now that we know that they have made a ton of work on the different products to make it as easy as possible for you to get started, to make it convenient for you to start working, you can now put the results or the output of these tools into one common platform, which is a data lake that they call one lake that has one format. It's data is stored there in a unified format. Okay, so let's see what she says about it. And we've also designed a one lake data hub for discovering, managing, and accessing the data across your organization as part of the experience. So you can quickly create data projects and then you can dump the results into the one lake in a unified format. So any of the other tools, if you want to go from data warehouse into a pipeline or to whatever, it can read from this format. Or for example, from Power BI, right? So if you are a Power BI developer, one lake is going to be your fabric act artifact, the one that you're going to use the most, unless you want to go into data engineering, then you would use fabric, you know, the whole full-fledged data platform fabric. But for the traditional Power BI engineer, the only thing that you need to worry about is one lake. How does it work? How do I access the data that is already in there? So how does this one lake actually work? I'm going to show you a short clip where she actually uh, wants to get data into a data lake and it uses both one lake and also data from Amazon Cloud to put the data in there because now you can actually get data for now just with Amazon as a shortcut. So it's not moving the data, you can put it as a shortcut and use it in Fabric. Let me show you how that works. In the lake house, I'm going to choose the option to create a new shortcut. And you can see I can create shortcuts to data that's already in one lake. I can browse the one lake data hub and select the lake house I would like to create a shortcut from. I can easily select the table I need. And in just a few seconds, my marketing table automatically shows up ready to be used. But the other amazing thing about shortcuts is they also work with external storage. And they're actually multi-cloud. So this time around, let's bring in some unstructured data. And instead of choosing one lake, not only can I choose Azure, but even an AWS S3 bucket. You can use Amazon data into Fabric and use the data without actually copying it. There's things that are good about this. There are things that are less good. We will talk about that. No, don't worry. So now I want to show you the last thing about one lake and is how they've made it again very convenient to access the data in one lake because they have mirrored the experience that you will get when you are syncing data from one drive or SharePoint. She actually shows this here. Let me show you. This makes it super simple to access the data lake and just work with it as you would with OneDrive. Here I've opened up my local Windows Explorer and you can see that alongside my OneDrive folder, I also have a one lake folder synced. Navigating through it, I can open up my marketing workspace. And my lake house I was just working in is right here. And I can navigate to the tables and files folders too. So as you can see, they've made it again very easy and convenient to access the data that is stored on one lake using Windows in, in your computer. So you can put any type of file in there. Uh, it comes at the price though, and we're going to talk about pricing now for the entire fabric, not only one lake. Okay, so let's talk about pricing. I stole this slide from Guy in the Cube. Adam has made a video 
I'm going to post the link down below because this video is perfect. It just explains it very, very well. So Microsoft Fabric, as of now, is a pay-as-you-go licensing model. So you are buying capacity, kind of like you do with Power BI, but pay-as-you-go, not cap capacity, cap price. And that is extremely dangerous for a platform that has been made convenient. So if you just let anybody in and create all this stuff, it's going to cost you the world. You need to be extremely careful before you actually let people create fabric artifacts in there because it will cost you. And as Justina said, it starts as a free trial. But what happens after? Are they going to automatically make it paid? Or I have a ton of questions, especially when it's a pay as you go. You know, with Power BI, because you know the premium capacity is five thousand dollars, it's a lot per month. But it's a cap price. You can budget it, and you can create then anything that you want in there. As a consultant, it gives me free of mind that I know that I'm not incurring any cost to the customer. But with Fabric, it's an entire different story. If you everything that you create has a pay as you go price, I guess Microsoft thought about it and said like. Mm, Let's start talking about a reserved instance. Adam talks about it in the video. It sounds that it's kind of like a premium capacity. So maybe they will make a capacity with a capped price so people can actually start working and have a feel for it. Without that, I think it's just so dangerous, especially, again, because they've made everything so convenient that it's going to cost you a fortune if you're not careful. If you come from the Power BI world, you're probably thinking like, oh, is the Power BI free license gone? No, it's not. For some reason, which is unfortunate, they decided to call it Microsoft Fabric Free. Um, whatever. But it is there. So you still have free, you have still have pro, you still have premium producer, and they have not changed. Even the premium capacity is still untouched. And you have the Azure, that, that one is the embed capacity that is still there. Then it has to do with Power BI. Nothing in the Power BI has changed. What they've done is they use the Power BI brand and put Fabric on it to, you know, get some buzz in the market because Power BI is being a successful product, so they are right in the wave. Naturally, anybody would do that. But this pricing says something very, very loud, and it is that Fabric is for enterprise companies. I don't see any small and medium companies actually having the time to test like how much is this going to cost me there's like it's not going to happen so if you're a part of a developer on a non-enterprise company you probably won't even see one lake let's talk about one lake do you remember when we were talking about what one lake actually was technically well one lake it was compared with one drive and sharepoint there's a huge difference though in there and number one is that is pay as you store it. <laughs> we call it like that. So everything that you store there, it costs you. You know, with OneDrive and SharePoint, you have Office 365 licenses. And they are capped in price by the license. So you can put whatever you want in there. It won't cost you any more than the license costs you every month. With one leg, that's not the case. And that can get very, very dangerous. Again, Adam says in the video, watch it, that they are thinking about having like a free capacity, like they have a OneDrive, and then after that, whatever, you, you know, you paid extra for whatever incurred cost, it could get quite expensive though. So be very, very, very careful with one leg too. If we compare one leg with SharePoint and OneDrive, for a business user, there's no difference other than the features that you have in SharePoint to actually manage content does not exist on one leg. I was hoping when I heard about one leg that that was the purview that we all were wanting and wishing that we would have, you know, to be able to truly discover and manage data. But it's not that. It's just a folder system. It's just a data lake that you, you're dumping stuff in there. How are we going to find anything in there with just folders? At least on SharePoint, you have manageability and you have you know, an entire full-fledged interface to manage your files. How would you do that in one lake when there's a ton of files in there? 
and again the cost. So I'm not sure. <laughs> the, the, obviously, the, the the good thing, if we're going to be fair in here, the good thing about one lake is that is that one file format for for data engineers probably going to be a dream. You can just, you know data warehouse to a data pipeline to a notebook to boom, boom, boom. Like, it just works. Beautiful. But for a, a user, like, you know, a business user, it makes no sense. And it costs you extra. Why would you pay for it with the worst file management support that you have in SharePoint? Last but not least, the last warning I want to give you is you know, you heard Justina talk about that you can actually integrate another cloud services into Fabric. And I want to give you a, a warning because if we learn something from the semiconductor crisis is that you need to have second sources for your critical services and products. And cloud services is one of the critical services nowadays. So, be careful how you integrate everything into one cloud. I would not do that because you are exposing yourself to whatever that cloud supplier would do in the future or whatever happens to that cloud supplier. So it is very easy to connect Power BI to Amazon. You don't need to put any shortcut in one that you can create it from there. Another thing is that if you're going to do any specific action with, you know, Amazon cloud data that you then need to have with a data warehouse in Microsoft, you need to join them anyway so you can do it. But do not put all your eggs in one basket because that is a dangerous practice to do. You will get into trouble guaranteed. Make sure that you have your cloud suppliers separate. Integrate them as needed, but responsibly. So if you want to get out, you can. So to summarize, Microsoft has created one platform where they've made all their data tools easier to be worked with and to start projects on, and also easier for data to be consumed between them by using this one lake and this unified Delta format, okay? The pricing tell us that this is made for enterprises. If you're a small and medium company, you probably will not be able to afford or manage it's going to be quite hard, especially with a pay-as-you-go. When it comes with a reserved instance, if you do have the money, then maybe it could be something for you. If you are a Power BI developer in the traditional way, you, I think your interaction with Fabric is going to be with one leg if the company decides to spin that off. If not, nothing changes for you. The same pricing model, the same artifacts, everything is the same in Power BI. And last but not least, keep your cloud separately. Make sure that you don't integrate and put everything into Microsoft Cloud. It would make no sense and it will make you vulnerable. So yeah, that's all for me. That's what I think about Microsoft Fabric. Let me know your thoughts. If you've tested something, if you've got your first build, it would be interesting to see how it looks. And I will see you in the next video.